guys. Hey, Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Can you hear me all right? Yes, yeah, you can. Perfect. Well, Dennis, thank you again uh, for taking the time out of your day, out of your week to speak with us um, on In Their 20s. Uh, we're super, super excited for this interview, and we just know that a lot of our viewers and listeners are going to have a lot to gain from your very inspirational advice. And again, just thank you so much. I think um, the best place to start will be since, you know, a lot of students and young professionals have had to deal with a huge change this year within the 2020 pandemic. And, you know, not only are we having to deal with the pandemic, but we also have uh, the social unrest and also the economic downturn um, that has really affected um, a lot of our peers, a lot of our friends, and a lot of other students our ages. Um, so when you were in your 20s, we understand that there was also um, another economic slowdown, uh, very similar to today. So how did you adapt to that difficult time at a time when you were trying to enter the workforce yourself? Yeah, you know, and that's absolutely true. I mean, I mean, I'm going to show my age here, but yeah, I, I graduated in the early 90s. And so speaking to you guys, I'm looking young and obviously hungry. We were going through the same exact situation. You know, there was the 87 uh, stock market crash that kind of impacted our economy. And then there were some policy changes that happened, but there was an economic slowdown at the time I graduated, for sure. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, at the University of Illinois, I graduated in May, right? And I really didn't uh, get my first real job. Uh, I started actually in January of the following year. So just think of that time between May and January. And th that was the time that I want to talk to you guys about and what kind of what I did. And so uh, back in those days, LinkedIn didn't exist, right? And so it was a lot of, um, you know, working a lot of the U of I databases, finding the employers. So kind of um, more of an archaic style, but finding out who the hiring managers were, researching the companies through, um, through some literature and writing them letters and finding out if they had any opening positions and somebody with, a, with an economics and finance degree, what, you know, what kind of opportunities are available out there. So I was really staying busy. And so if, if I'm gonna give your audience some advice is you have to stay busy, okay? Even if you have to work, that's primarily not where you're going to be at this point in time. If you have to work, go ahead and do that. You know what I mean? But you got to take care of business first. That's what I always say. So what I did there was, um, believe it or not, I wasn't at all panicked. None. I knew my degree was going to take me places. I just needed to be selective. I needed to be busy and find kind of the right track. Uh, during that time, when I was looking around, uh, one industry that uh, seemed to always be calling me back was the insurance industry, and because of that, I started researching. You know what kind of you know prof you know what what kind of track can I run with an economics and finance degree? And I found quite a few, and I got some interviews. Uh, you know, kind of like weighing my options, and I, I ended up finally finding an offer, getting an offer sometime in October and starting in January, right? It was in the city of Chicago. I ended up working for a company called CNA. Um, it was, a, as a matter of fact, the building I work at today is just the next building over. So talk about like a walk back memory lane. It was just amazing that I'm working for a company now that's just really close to where I started my career. But, um, but yeah, but you have to really stay busy. And when I say stay busy, by staying busy, you stay positive, right? And that's and ultimately what happened to me. now. I also hear a lot of things when I talk to, to uh, younger adults right now. I know a lot of people sometimes get um, a little worried and then they end up kind of doubling down, right? They're looking to get their master's degree, right? And so, look, at the time I was going to school, the price, college prices weren't as steep as they are today. I, I, both of you guys know that, right? And so we had a little bit more leeway or runway, so to speak. But if you are, you know, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying don't get your master's degree, but I, I kind of say, you know, take a deep breath, hit the pause button a little bit, okay? Um, if you're getting a master's degree, get a master's degree because you know you need a master's degree. Like, for instance, if you're in accounting, you know, in order for you to get the CPA, you need to get a master's in accountancy, right? And so in that example, certainly go ahead and get your master's degree. But before you take that endeavor, knowing what the prices are these days, you know, take a deep breath, you know, and don't, you know, don't take that option right off the bat, you know, um, keep yourself busy, get your interviews up, you know what I mean? Go to LinkedIn, um, look at your networks, right? Both of you gentlemen went to DePaul, 
DePaul is a great city school. They have great business reach with uh, business professionals out there. If you knew people that graduated a couple of years ahead of you, get in contact with them. They're not gonna turn you down. They're, they're DePaul graduates, right? And find out if they're hiring or perhaps knows of another person who may be hiring and stay aggressive, right? If you do those things, you're gonna stay busy, you're gonna stay positive, and you're gonna get what you're looking for. So that's my, my advice uh, for all of them. And, and in, that, in that same time frame, you know, if you have student loans that, uh, that you're help, helping manage, do some research on what you need to do to either defer payment or consolidating those loans. But you know what, those are a mark of somebody who's got their act together, right? And so hopefully four years or however long it took you to get your college degree and being outside of your family's home, if you were able to, you know, you know granted, you know, uh, going to school away from your family's home, um, granting you that independence to start thinking on your own two feet. Love that, Dennis. Um, I love it so much because what you're saying is, you know, now's the time to really be strategic in your 20s. Um, you know, nobody has, no one person has all the answers you need, uh, but now is the time to really sit down, as you said, take a deep breath and analyze, okay, you know, now I just had this recent job offer deferred or furloughed or, you know, taken away. Um, what am I going to do uh, to make sure that, you know, tomorrow, next week, next month, I'm better prepared and also I'm able to use that degree to the best of my ability. Um, as you know, what everybody had planned to do. So, you know, I, I love that. I mean, now's the time to really be strategic, utilize the resources, um, the alumni networks, as you mentioned, things like LinkedIn, things that didn't, you know, exist um, a while ago. I mean, but now we have uh, resources like that that can help so much. And of course, you know, we still have responsibilities like paying rent and you know, do, taking care of the day to day. Thankfully, you know, we have so many gig opportunities like, you know, maybe Postmates or Uber that I mean, people can take advantage of. So I really love um, that you really, you know, stuck on the point of just like, you know, in the 20s, understanding that we're all going through a lot of, you know, uncertainty right now. Now is the time to be strategic. And, and Dennis, it's really interesting that you brought up, you know, DePaul being a city school, because you yourself, you went to U of I as well as DePaul University. Um, so in your opinion, what was the difference in the atmosphere between, you know, a, a state school in a private school, but also what benefits did you gain from going to DePaul, which is in the heart of Chicago, and compared to a more remote university like U of I, which is more <laughs> cornfield surrounded? <laughs> There's a lot of corn down there in Champaign, I gotta admit. <laughs> but, uh, oh yeah, that's a great question, guys. And uh, let me give it to you from my perspective, because um, when I went down to U of I, I mean, I just grad obviously graduated from high school, so I was a, I was a younger man back then. Okay, so I did the, I think the more traditional route, right? So I got my undergraduate degree at Illinois and a big university has its pluses and minuses, no doubt about it. And I can speak from perspective, right? And so um, one of the things I learned from U of I is that boy, as big of a school as it is, okay? Ton of resources, ton of alumni. Um, the, the one big strategy, the one thing that I really gained from there is just being independent, right? We talked about that just earlier. When, when you're away from home and you're at a big school like that and you're one smish, you know, one fish in a huge ocean, my goodness, you gotta find yourself, right? And you'll learn a lot about yourself. It was a good place for me to start learning who I was and what my brand was going to be, right? And I think a lot of kids kind of misinterpret that. You, you wanna be independent, but at U of I, I mean, let's face it, as big of a school as it is, I, I was able to see a few college professors, you know, my last couple of years there, but earlier, earlier on, you're basically being taught by TAs, what we call them TAs, teaching assistants, right, or graduate students. And so, you know, Illinois does a good job of making sure uh, these TAs also have uh, a knack for education or educate, you know, educating kids, but at the same time, they may, they may not be their cup of tea. And so I found myself you know, um, really having a hunker down, right? That's what the big states go. You got to hunker down. You do have to do a little bit of self-study. You got to find help where you need to get help and take the exams and get through it and, and get through it. Even though you you feel like you're a number, you're really not. You know what you've got to do. You got to stay focused, right? And so U of I granted me all that. I was 18 at the time when I started there. DePaul, I got my master's degree. 10 years later, I was 28 at the time, right? And so when I started at, at DePaul, 
Uh, by the way, I've always had an affinity for DePaul because you guys are too young, but back in the day, they had, they had an awesome basketball team. They were really renowned. But uh, long story short, I was 28 years old. Um, I happened to get lucky working for an employer that paid 75% of tuition. Okay, and so that kind of helped. Okay, uh, that's a great benefit to have, and I certainly took advantage of it. Um, but at that point in time, I was a little bit older. The, the class sizes were a lot smaller, and all of the quality of the education. Wow, what a huge difference. I mean, I got professors that really loved to teach, who knew what they were talking about. They were, you know, they were um, leaders in the in Chicago business community, so I really, I really loved that. And I, I really expanded my reach there at DePaul. I was able to go to a school that was really um, renowned in the city of Chicago. I know I wanted to continue to work here in the city of Chicago. And so DePaul was really one of those anchor schools that really got me there. And so I really only have great memories of both of the schools. But as you can tell, different times of my life, different benefits of my life. But you know, if anybody's looking to get into any state school or a private school like DePaul, yeah, the class sizes, man, they make a difference. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, they do have their give and takes, both universities, right? So it depends what experience you're looking for. Uh, state school might have additional resources to your disposal. Uh, but really, it's, it's kind of give and take. Yeah, you got to see, do I want smaller class sizes? Am I okay with larger class sizes? It, it all comes down to what you want at the end of the day. Exactly. Yeah, make the most of it. Absolutely. From what you got. Mm -hmm. Right. And now, Dennis, you, uh, the situation you're in right now, you actually mentor and uh, manage a lot of younger employees. So this, discuss some of the important skills that they should have coming into an industry. Maybe they've never been in this industry before, and that's not knowledge they're going to have. What skills can they get or obtain or have at that time that can make them successful yeah and so yeah i've been i've been privileged by um you know been hiring uh individuals not only recently but throughout my career and so i've got a pretty good feel for you know what kind of attributes i look for and qualities i look for for uh, new employees especially younger employees that are getting their feet wet into the industry but um i can think of four qualities that I think I want to talk about today. I'll, I'll name them, not necessarily in order, but I'm just going to mention them to you guys now, and, I'll, and then I'll describe them. So the first one is going to be initiative, okay? And even though it sounds like a punchline, all four of these things, I'll, I'll get you the context of what I'm talking about. So the first one I look for is somebody who has initiative, okay? Second one, being organized. I'll get into a minute and describing what that means, being organized, and really having a good idea of what it means to be organized. Third, naturally curious, curious, okay? I'll get to that in a minute. And then the last one, being coachable, okay? So think about it. You graduate from a university, you've got academia all over you, right? Theory of what's gonna happen. You, you get it in a real world or work in the working world, you know, part of that is still in play. The other part is really, what I call a school of hard knocks. It's really you, right? When, when, I, when I talk about uh, when you were independent, finding your name brand or who, what your brand is, it's going to certainly show in the first few years in your working career. So let me go from initiative, right? Typically, when we go through training, right, we're going to go through a module, we're going to do some training, we're going to give you some examples. When I talk about initiative, I mean, you know the old saying when you got to do that extra credit, right, back in the day? I mean, in, in the work life, it is very visible to the employer, right? So whenever you get an opportunity to give a little bit more to what you can, absolutely do it. Like so after a training, for example, if, if you go out of your way and you hit me up a couple of days later and say, hey, Dennis, you know that one thing you taught me? I, I took a couple of examples, did it on my own. I wanna show it to you. You, might, you have a few minutes to go over it. Boom, that's a big score for me, okay? And a little project, doing a little bit above and beyond makes a huge difference. That's what I'm talking about initiative. It cannot be taught, right? Think about it. It cannot be taught in the workplace. It needs to be embedded in you, right? And so think about initiative for once and then organize, okay? Uh, whether you are going into a meeting or you're running a meeting, 
right? So if you're going into a meeting and there is uh, an, uh, a presentation that's forwarded over to you, okay, when I say organized, also being prepared, take a look at it a half an hour beforehand, have some questions ready. You wanna stick out like a sore thumb, being a first year or second year individual in an organization, ask the questions, ask the questions. You, you will be surprised on how you stick out like from the rest of, your, of the people that are probably your age, the ones that are young and asking questions, you stick out, okay? I, and you know what, if you don't think people my age aren't paying attention, you're kidding yourself. I'm absolutely paying attention, okay? And, I, and when I say organized, I mean, I also mean being organized in the day as well. So right now we're talking virtual, right? And so with, with this pandemic, uh, goodness, and the business world has kind of changed, right? A lot of us are working more remote now, or maybe hybrid, okay? But this means you have to be a self-starter, right? Imagine yourself when you were in high school or when you were a college student, okay, how you organize your day. I love speaking with individuals that know what they're doing at 7.30 in the morning, at eight in the morning, how to, what they're doing in the middle of the day, how they're closing the day, how they're, how they're closing the day and preparing for the next day. What are your goals this week? You want, enough, and you want to be a different trader? Talk in those terms in front of your managers. Here's what I'm doing today. Here's what I'm, here are my goals this week. If you don't want to give me my goals this week, I'm going to create my own goals this week. But can I run it by you? That's, that's what I mean by being organized, okay? Curious was number three, right? And I said naturally curious. Uh, you guys are too young, but I have kids, right? You know, when they were kids, you, you know, remember uh, when we were talking, they would ask that, question, hey dad, why? They would keep asking, why, why, why? And you know, after a while you get kind of tired of it, but then after, when you think about it in the business world and putting it into practicality, you don't have to be so annoying asking why in the workplace, okay? But think about the way you're trained. Most organizations that train people will teach you how to do things, right? And they will passively bypass why you're doing it. They'll, you'll get to it, okay? But if you want to accelerate your learning and also stand out, you want to ask more why questions than how questions. Challenge the status quo, right? It's okay to challenge the status quo. People are looking for individuals like that. Companies are gonna grow when the people underneath are challenging the status quo. That's how you survive in the industry, okay? And so, being naturally curious is an asset to you. Okay, that's number three. Coachable is the last one, and that, and that goes without saying, right? And being coachable means that when you're being trained, you're paying attention. I look for people who are taking notes. I'm taking people who are looking at the content that's been delivered to them and actually using it in their day-to-day. -day. I look for that, and I pay attention to it. And, and it also goes to this saying, you wanna be a great leader? You gotta be a great student. Right? How many times have you heard that? You want to be a good leader, you have to be a great student first. And so when I ask people young in their 20s is to do those, those are the four attributes that I look for and quality I look for for high performing individuals. Taking initiative, being organized, rock solid, being naturally curious and being coachable. Those are the four. Very good principles for someone who may not have the technical knowledge but you can still be successful without the technical knowledge because as you go and you're on the job, you'll learn uh, you know, what, what needs to get done in, in regards to technicalities, but these soft skills, soft skills can get you uh, is just as far as the technical skills. So uh, now when you're in your 20s and you just got to this firm, what's the importance of connecting with some of the older members? Some of the members, maybe not even on your team, but you run into them in the hallway at work, still could be a great person to connect with. What's the importance of that? Oh, critical. So some organizations are really good at this, right? Their culture is such that they believe in mentorship and they actually even have a mentor program. Um, and if you are privy or lucky enough to work with an organization like that, kudos to you, take advantage of it, okay? But if, if it's absent of having a mentor program, that doesn't necessarily mean that you lie absent of it as well. So seek out. So yes, older members 
more seasoned individuals. And I think my, the best advice I would give them is this. Look, if you're in your 20s, and I did this when I was in my 20s, you can, with your naked eye, you can tell after you've been through meetings, who are your A players and who are your B players? Can you not, right? Look at them, okay? And not to say emulate them, but find one or two people, or could even be more, but try to keep it to maybe two or three people, but uh, communicate with them, talk to them and say, hey, you know what? You've been in this, uh, in this company for six years now, let's say. You should find somebody who's been working there for maybe five years and the other one maybe a little bit longer, or maybe another one who's maybe a senior there. Try to find those folks and try to say, hey, you know what? I want to get to your level. What do you do? Those questions and your ability to do that means a lot about your character, okay? And here's the other thing, too, when I say, when you know who the A players are, right? So when you seek their advice and when you're going through your review, okay, and, and if and you happen to find the three people that have a very influential voice in your promotion, what do you think they're going to remember? your technical ability, which is probably going to be there because that could be taught, or your ability for them, for you to tell them that you wish to advance in this company. I want to know what it takes and what I need to do. And so having a mentor shape that for you, help you in your career track, skills that you need, whether it be technical, soft skills, managerial skills, the more you are taking initiative in what you're doing and finding those mentors, it's all interrelated, right? This is the best way you're going to be perceived. Let's face it, when you're asking for a promotion, a lot of it is your, is your work, but the, uh, the other part of it is something you won't want to ignore, is the perception of you. Dennis, thank you so much. Uh, you're really laying out just a lot of amazing advice, uh, not only speaking about your own personal experiences, but also like what you like to see in the workplace. Um, and how you know students and young professionals in their 20s can succeed. Um, personally, I really love the four principles also that you laid out. Um, you know, just showing initiative in your 20s, being organized, um, staying curious, and then also remaining coachable. Um, those are really, really four strong points that I believe anybody can benefit a lot from hearing. So again, thank you so much just for everything that you've been able to give to us in this interview. Um, and again, Michael and I are really fortunate to have had the opportunity to speak with you. Take care, guys. Have a great evening. Perfect. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You too.